Hello and welcome to a tutorial on using the cube template that I've provided on the PTE forum. If you have an image which is square, or if you make an image which is square, it's quite easy to add that image to the side of the cube or images uh, simply by replacing the default image in the template. And I'll show you how that's done. I'm going to Objects and Animations, and here I have the basic template, and I have placed a, an image on it, uh, an art image that was done by a friend of mine, and the same image appears on all six sides. The entire cube action, that is the size of the cube and what happens to it in terms of rotation and so forth, is controlled by this controlling frame at the top here. Each of these other frames simply control, they, they're not to be changed because they control the position of the sides of the cube. But what you can change are the sides of the cube itself. So if you have an image, I have made these 600 by 600 pixels, and I would suggest that you do the same size your images to 600 by 600 just to make it easy to replace. Um, if you wish, you can change that to all of them to 800 by 800 or, or any square for that matter, but you want to keep them this approximately the same. So to change, all you need to do to change an image is to click on the Properties tab, click on one of the sides, and then click on the, uh, the little icon here, the Open Folder, beside the, the, the name of that side, and then go over to and navigate through your drive and find the appropriate image. Now I have placed some simple images in, under the, in with the cube template green side, which is actually a yellow side, a blue side, and red side. So if I click on the blue side and open it, then what I have done is I'll drag this along so you can see, is replaced one of the sides of the cube with blue. If I wanted, for example, to, to replace this side with a different color, I can do the same thing. I can go in here and uh, go to my cube template and maybe let's make it a red side. And let's see what happens. We have a red side and a blue side. So your own images can be replaced just as easily. But the important thing I want to explain today is that you can also replace these sides with a video, if you like, or with an animated GIF. So let's see how we could do this with a video. So let's choose a side here. happens to be the side facing this. And we don't do it the same way. We don't go up and replace the image. Um, because you can't replace an image which is a JPEG or a BMP or a PNG with a video. You have to add the video as a child. So we right click on the side and say add video. Now the video, to do this properly, the video should be in a square format. There are ways around that and I'll explain that in a moment. But I'm going to go get one which I've made into a square format called Harry Spider, and so I'm going to rotate this, and you can see the spider moving there because it's a video. So the question becomes, how do we replace a side with a video which isn't square? In order to do that, it's a little more complicated. What you need to do is you need to, to go to the side that you want to replace. I'm going to use the same side. I'm going to delete this spider. The reason I'm doing this is because this side is facing us. I'm going to add a mask. And we want that mask to be a rectangle, and we want it to be perfectly square with, with no uh, radius, or at least no more than we have to have, and no blur more than the 0.01 that's required. Okay. Now, inside that mask, we want to add a video. So let's add a video. I'm going to go pick a video which is not the right size. See if I can find something here. Here's one, an MP4, and I'm going to use the original file for this. Okay, as you can see, it doesn't fit.
properly. So in order to make it fit properly, we do this visually. We'll simply click on the, uh, the um, keyframe at the beginning. And then we're going to go to size the mask rectangle. And, we want, and the rectangle is square, so we'll size it so it fits perfectly here. You might want to increase your, your viewing size to 150 or so, so you can see that you've got the size correct. Then we simply want to increase the video size. until it fills the frame. And this is the little red border that you're going to have unless you expand the mask. Sometimes the border is kind of nice to have. Anyhow, so now let's see what we have. And there we have a video on the side that's been resized. Obviously, you, won't, you will miss some of the things that's in the video. But I'm going to play this for you to show you how it would work. And you can see the video is actually running on the one side of the cube. And we have the red side still that we change and so forth. <clears throat> That's essentially how you do it, folks. It's a matter of either using a square video or a square animated GIF or using a mask to make it square. And, of course, you can move the content of the video back and forth by simply moving the, the video itself. And you do that in exactly the same way. But, of course, we can't see it here. We would have to move our, our controller over just a little and create a temporary keyframe so that we could slide the video content back and forth, up and down, and so forth. But that's the way we, we approach this. Hopefully this will help you do some more complex actions if those are the kind of animations that... Hi folks and welcome to the second installment of two AVI tutorials on the cube template that I provided for the PTE forum. In the previous tutorial I talked about how to replace the sides of the template with your own JPEG or BMP or PNG or even uh, video images and possibly even an animated GIF. In this one, I'd like to talk about how to control the actions, that is, the rotation and the position of the cube. And the way we do this is to go to the Objects and Animation screen. And the first thing we want to do <coughs> is to highlight the first uh, keyframe. And then we want to change the smooth action that I have in the uh, initial uh, template to linear on all three sides. The reason we do this is if you do not change uh, the action to linear before you make changes to the size or position or rotation, you'll have some surprises and things won't work the way you think they should. So always go back to linear to make your changes. And once you have all the changes and adjustments made the way you want them, then you can change it back to smooth if you wish or accelerated or whatever. But do all your changes and all your adjustments to the uh, cube at the linear uh, motion. So this controlling frame at the top here controls the actions, the size, and so forth. So if we click on the initial keyframe, for example, uh, and I just move the slider along, you'll see that it, it has two rotations, uh, apparently about 720 degrees as it goes across to the end keyframe, but the size remains the same. Well, what if we wanted the size to change? Well, we could simply put a keyframe here somewhere, anywhere. I'm going to put it about at 30 seconds, give or take. And then I'm going to simply go up at that point and drag and make it larger. Well, what will that do? Let's take a look. From the beginning, it begins rotating, and as it rotates, it gets larger. When it reaches this point, it begins to get smaller and go back to its initial size. So we could add another keyframe out here, for example, and we could change its size in between, add another keyframe. We could do all kinds of things. Let's see what happens here. Larger, smaller, larger, so forth. We could also change its position, where it is on the screen. 
Now let's see what happens. As you can see, it's moving about left and right and so forth. So in other words, we can change its position and its size real easily with keyframing as long as we change things to linear first. <clears throat> now what about the rotation itself? Well, the rotation is done in the animations tab using the 3D parameters. And as you can see, it initially starts out with nothing. It's, it's, it's not rotating at all when it begins. And then if we click on the far keyframe, we can see I have it set up initially to rotate 720 degrees in, on both axes. Well, what if I took one of these out, put it back to zero? What will happen? Let's see. Well, it only rotates in one direction. It stays right where it is and rotates in one direction. What if I were to take the opposite out? Let's put this back to 720 degrees and take out the x-axis and make that zero. As you can see, it rotates in, in, in the opposite direction on the x-axis. So by changing these values, let's change this to 1440. That means it's going to make four complete 360-degree rotations in the one-minute time I've allotted. So if I were to change this to 720, it's going to rotate two times two 360 degree times, or 720 degrees, on the x-axis while it rotates 14 and 40 degrees, 1440 degrees on the y-axis. So as you can see, it's quite easy to change both the, the uh, rotation type and the size and so forth by simply changing this controlling frame. And once you have that all done, then you can go back if you wish, <coughs> and you can change the um, smooth on and change it on all three and then you go into setup and do your separate like you've learned to do in the past there you go now now we'll have smooth action so as you can see it starts out very slowly and then gradually builds speed and then at the end of the animation it would slow down and do the same thing that's essentially all there is to it. What you have to keep in mind is that you want to click on the frame and you want to change the normal animation action from custom or from smooth. I had smooth in the beginning. Uh, you want to change it to linear. And then make your changes in direction, rotation, and uh, size and so forth via the controlling frame. And once you've done that, then if you wish, you can go back and change the uh, parameters on the, um, the pan, zoom, and rotate to smooth or whatever. That's essentially it.